Welcome to version 3.12 of the Stream Deck MIDI plugin. This version has something many of you have asked for, a scripted dial. This video will mainly be about this new scripted dial, but first some info that applies to both the scripted dial and the generic MIDI button. For the scripted dial, several new script actions allow you to control fields and dropdowns in the editor. Whenever the same fields and dropdowns are present for the generic MIDI button, you can use these actions there too. Please head over to the script actions page on the website to see which actions are available for both buttons and dials. Many of these new actions set the selected option for dropdowns. These actions must define the selected option exactly as it is displayed in the dropdown. And to simplify this, there is a new copy feature where you can copy the selected option to the clipboard. Let's say I have a script like this where I want to toggle the dial display between being a fader and a v-pot when I press the dial. To do this I need to control the display, the design and the value display dropdowns. And the recommended way to do this is to select the option you want in the dropdown and then right click the dropdown. This will copy the selected option to the clipboard and you can simply paste it into your script. So let's say I want a black silver design, right click and then paste it. And I want a panning value to be displayed, so I right click that and paste it. For the second press command I want to have a fader. So I do the same things here. like that. So if I save this script and I load it on the dial, I can now switch the display between fader and vpot. And you see that the content of the dropdowns are changed as well. The value display action for the second press command show why it is important to copy paste the options instead of typing them. The Cubase Nuendo DB file option has a double space in the name, which is not clearly visible when you see it in the dropdown. But if you copy paste it, you know that you will get the correct content. A new feature in this version is that you can have a script with only release events if you want to. This can make sense for dials where you can have different commands executed depending on whether the dial has been rotated while being pressed. So you can add filter properties if you add a colon R to a release command. You will have a command that is only executed if the dial has been rotated while being pressed. And if you add colon N it will be executed only if the dial has not been rotated while being pressed. So if I add a release colon N on these two commands, I will have a solution where it will change the design if I press and release the dial. But if I press and rotate the dial, it will not change the design. Please check the Script Events webpage for more information about these new press release features. I will not go through each and every new action in this video that would take forever. So I recommend that you visit the web pages for Script Events and Actions to get all the details. For the remainder of this video, I will show some example scripts for what you can do, and you can download these scripts from the description below. The first example is a simple script to handle dial rotation. When you rotate the dial, you will get rotate events, and to control the position of the fader or v-pot, you can use the value action. 
The rotate event can be filtered for situations where the dial is pressed or not pressed, or when it is rotated left or right. And to control the value for the situation where the dial is rotated while pressed, you can use the colon P property for the value action. So when I rotate the dial, I will control the fader in Cubase. And when I change the fader in Cubase, I control the position for the dial. This second example shows how you can use the left and right screen tap situations to control mute and solo functions in Cubase. So if I load this example, I will get mute and solo icons in the display, and yet I can tap the display to change the state. And if I change the functions in Cubase, I will have the situation mapped to the dial. This example shows how you can have custom tap zones on the display. So when I tap the left third of the display, I will initiate a pre-programmed fade down, and the right third of the display will initiate a pre-programmed fade up, and the middle of the display will stop any fade in progress. So if I tap the left third of the screen, I, the, the fade down is executed, and the right third of the screen will do a fade up. And if I tap the middle of the screen, I will stop the fade. In this final example, I control the volume fader when the dial is not pressed, and I control the pan position when it is pressed. And to highlight this, I changed the display type when I press and release the dial. So it looks like this. If I just rotate the dial, I control the volume fader. And when I press the dial, I change the display type to a V-pot and I control the pan position. And when I release the dial, I restore the fader design. I have also added a variation to the fader design when the fader level is reaching high levels. So when I reach high fader levels, I change the fader design to highlight this. That's all for this video, but as I mentioned, please check the web pages for the script events and actions to get all the details. Thanks for watching.